When we think about Vicarage Road, most of us think about football. But over the 100 years we've been here, the stadium has been used in many other ways. Before a ball was kicked, a horse show was held in the ground in 1922. And in 1927, as the new sport of Speedway swept the UK, a motorcycle football match was arranged. Some 4,000 people watched Watford beat West Brom by three goals to nil, but goodness knows what all those tyres did to the pitch on a rainy day. In 1950, the Vic was transformed into a boxing arena for a series of fights promoted by local physiotherapist and entrepreneur Eddie Mallet. Mallet had himself worn the Watford football shirt in the 1915-16 season. The next year saw another fundraising initiative with the establishment of the Greyhound track around two thirds of the pitch. There were usually meetings twice a week and with a few breaks, racing continued until 1978. For several years, there were November firework displays and Christmas concerts at the stadium. A concert of a different kind took place on the 5th of May, 1974. Elton John, already a musical superstar, held a concert at the stadium with Rod Stewart as an added attraction. It was attended by tens of thousands of music and football fans. The first Carols by Floodlight was held in 1989. The Watford Observer previewed the event. A chorus of voices will raise the roof and spirit at Vicarage Road Stadium in December, but there won't be a football in sight. The occasion will be Watford Football Club's first ever Christmas carol concert, which will be attended by television soccer commentator John Motson. The Carols by Floodlight evening will kick off at 6.30pm on December 22nd. Music on the night will be provided by the Harrow Salvation Army Band, and song sheets will be given to everyone who attends. In May 1990, a celebration of a different kind took place. 32 of, of the close family and friends. friends. Um, uh, we had a full tour of the whole of the, whole of the stadium. Our wedding pictures were on the on the pitch. Yeah, it's the. I remember it was the, all the ball boys, wasn't it? They, they, they came out yeah, uh, 10 minutes before, before the game uh, with congratulations um, and along with nine and a half thousand other spectators who, who were at our wedding. Yeah. Jump forward a few years and we find the Vic shared with Saracens Rugby Football Club. Starting in the 1997-8 season, the ground share would last for 16 years. Supporters would become familiar with the soccer goalposts being dismantled rapidly at the end of the 90 minutes and could clearly see the green overpainted markings for the pitch in rugby layout. A previous ground sharing arrangement with Wheelstone, who had sold their ground and now Harrow Tesco store in a deal that imploded for the visitors and the final financial settlement in Watford's favour, allowed the club to erect first the North Vicarage Road stand and later the Rookery. The club's charity, the Watford FC Community Sports and Education Trust, had at this time a flourishing learning centre, which attracted attention from the Prime Minister of the time, Tony Blair, but also of a regular Watford supporter. A key stage three literacy consultant, in other words, working in education, charged with improving literacy in secondary schools. Now I saw a golden opportunity to fuse together my two interests, my work interests with the football ground and I knew Watford had a state of the art, well ahead of the game learning centre. So I phoned the club, we negotiated it with my bosses, it would be a legitimate thing to do and uh, we arranged a visit here and I did indeed um, visit the learning centre, met the staff there, watched the pupils at work and saw really good opportunities which could be replicated with young students in Brighton and Hove, uh, possibly using a location like a stadium in Brighton and Hove or any other good location. I did indeed um, look at the uh, learning centre and found that really, really interesting. Well, what I was hoping for was a little private tour of the ground of some sort. Now, I didn't arrange it in advance, but I did wear my special 1980s tie to try and persuade if necessary, but I was, I was offered the opportunity for a little tour. 
And we went round the uh, Elton John suite. I think I was taken into the changing rooms. And what I strictly wouldn't be allowed to do today, I was able to do discreetly on that day, which was to pluck a tiny tuft of uh, pitch grass without anybody noticing. And home it went to Brighton and was attached to a poster of our 1999 victory um, against uh, Bolton Wanderers in the playoff finals. So a really good um, visit and it's my best day at work ever. As the new millennium began, Watford Football Club was in a parlous financial state. A newly formed Watford Supporters Trust started a campaign under the slogan, Let's Buy Back the Vic. In 2005, a Long Road Life president and recently knighted Sir Elton John to the rescue. The Watford Observer reported on the gig. In 2005, Elton John played to a sellout 23,000 fans at his beloved Vicarage Road Stadium. Elton played a two and a half hour set featuring all his classics as well as songs from his new album, Peachtree Road. His love for Watford FC was ever evident as the dress code was yellow, which most of the fans observed. The concert itself was thought to have raised 1.3 million, with Elton stating the money would be used to purchase new players. In fact, much of it did go to repurchase the freehold to the ground, which the club still holds. A further concert in 2010 raised 1.35 million to help defray the club's eight million pounds of debt. It was a rather damp day and many watched under umbrellas and in transparent porches. The decade of the 2020s began with the COVID pandemic with its horrific death toll echoing the Spanish flu pandemic a century earlier. The Vicarage Road Stadium was transformed very rapidly as the club extended its facilities to the hospital next door. Thousands of scrubs and uniforms were laundered, a thousand meals were provided for staff every day by volunteers, a maternity unit was developed in the sensory room and there was space for Harris staff to unwind after often 12-hour shifts. Taking a walk from, um, from the hospital coming here, that alone is refreshing. Uh, once you get here, the warm welcome that we get from the staff, uh, the food, the facilities, just looking across the pitch, uh, the fresh air, absolutely amazing. So it's made a huge difference to the staff. As a fitting end to a decade of uses of the stadium for things other than football, Sir Elton John again performed at the Vic with two concerts on the 3rd and 4th of July 2022.